Hello everybody. Happy Sunday. I hope you have had a fantastic week. Today, our story, our Bible story is about families and what Paul wrote about families. Do you remember Paul? Do you remember him? Yeah, he was the same guy who was persecuting the Christians. He was going all around, you know, making sure they were killed and um, taken into prison, just given a really hard time. And on the road to Damascus, he was stopped dead in his tracks by Jesus. And he was blinded for a couple of days and, um, he received his sight back. Um, but he was, his name was changed and he became a new man. Um, and he became, and he, um, proclaimed the word of God. And he also, um, taught about Jesus because that was his issue before he did not believe in Jesus. And so he wrote the book of Ephesians and he gave, um, some instructions about the structure of family and how we should treat each other in our families. And so that's what our lesson is about today. And it's taken from Ephesians, which is in the New Testament, chapter 5, verses 22 and th through 33, and chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. All right, I'm going to read out of our Sunday school book. While Paul was in prison in Rome, he wrote a letter to the Christians who lived in the city of Ephesus. Paul wanted to encourage them to love others like Jesus did. In Paul's letter, he wrote specific instructions about God's plan for families. He challenged families to honor Jesus by treating each other respectfully. Paul explained that marriage is a picture of Jesus and the church. Paul reminded the people that Jesus loved the church and gave his life for the church. Paul challenged the husbands to follow Jesus' example and love their wives as much as they love themselves. He told the wives to respect their husbands as the head of the home, like Jesus is the head of the church. Paul instructed children to obey their parents in the Lord because it's one of God's commands and the right thing to do. Paul told parents not to frustrate their children or make them angry or resentful. Instead, parents should provide loving discipline and training in the ways of the Lord. Wow. It's a lot of instructions about how God wants to see our families um, function, pretty much. Now, we've all pretty much been together in our homes with our families, not being able to see other people since March. Some people have been more loose with it. Some people have been a little bit tighter um, with um, a quarantine during the pandemic. So we've all had to really be with our families a lot more than we have in the past. Can we agree on that? Okay, we can agree on that. And I am sure a lot of people's nerves have gone up here with each other. I'm sure kids, your nerves have gone high with either siblings or with your parents. Parents may have their nerves with either each other or their kids. Everybody's nerves are running high. I get it. <laughs> But ultimately, I would hope and I pray that everyone is still treating each other respectfully because that is what God requires of us. That is one of the ways that we honor Jesus in our families is by showing respect to one another. Even in the midst of an argument or a disagreement or you being tired, or some you might be more playful and someone else is tired. We have to be respectful at all times. 
what does respectful look like? Being respectful is speaking in a nice tone, not yelling at each other, not cussing each other out, um, giving each other space when someone needs quiet time or a time out. Um, being respectful is being a good listener, even when you don't want to listen, but really listening and taking time out to understand what another person is trying to say. Those are all examples of being respectful. And Jesus also gave instruction for um, kids, making sure that you're being obedient. When your parents ask you to do something, you shouldn't suck in your teeth. Ugh. You should not just outrightly not do it, but you should do it swiftly and without complaint. As long as you're not being put in danger, you need to be obedient to your parents. Hear me, as long as you're not being put in danger, and no one else is being put in danger, you're supposed to be obedient to your parents. Because that is one of God's commandments. You're supposed to do that. And parents, we are supposed to be respectful to our children too. Parents are supposed to be respectful. We're not supposed to do things That'll just make you angry. I want you to understand. There's a difference between you being disciplined for something and you're angry that you got caught or that you're in trouble. Versus you didn't do anything wrong. You were doing everything you were supposed to do. And a parent does something just to be mean. That's what Paul is talking about. Not supposed to do things just to be mean, just because you have authority. Not supposed to do that. Parents aren't supposed to do that. So it's a very fine line. But when we discipline, when a parent disciplines, it's supposed to be with love. You're supposed to show love. Explain why you're being disciplined. Explain how they're disappointed and explain what the right thing or the right way to go about it should have been. And Paul also talks about husbands and wives and how the head of the household is supposed to be, is supposed to love everybody in that household like Jesus loves them, willing to die to protect them, to save them. That's the kind of love that the head of the household is supposed to have. And everyone is supposed to respect that head of the household. Yeah, this is the structure that God wants us to have in our homes, have in our families. But the, the, there's supposed to be a level of respect. And that is what is overarching. If you respect somebody, you're going to be obedient. You're going to be loving. You're going to um, do what is asked of you because you respect them. We respect Jesus. So when Jesus asks us to do something, we're supposed to be obedient. And, and we love him and we, we listen to him. We take his wisdom out of respect. We don't talk back to Jesus. So we shouldn't be talking back in our houses, in our homes, in our families. We should be loving each other wholeheartedly, speaking with love. The, um, in the Bible, it says, speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That means there should be um, love that, that is in your speech. There should be a joy that's 
in your speech. So we have to learn how to take that edge off when we're talking to each other. There are times that we're going to be frustrated and angry, but we have to learn how to show our disappointment in a respectful way. You don't want to always have anger in your household. You don't always want there to be sadness in your household or resentment or frustration. Your home should be a place where you feel love, where you feel acceptance, where there is joy, where the spirit of the Lord is, where there is peace. You don't want to dread going home. You don't want that. And God doesn't want that for you. I challenge you all to invite God's Holy Spirit into your homes so that there will be this dwelling of peace in your home. And let's let's work this week of being respectful in how we speak to each other in our home and how we can treat each other with love and how we can honor each other in our homes this week. Let's do that. Let's challenge each other this week and talk together as a family about how you in your home can follow God's plan and work together to honor God. Sound good? Great. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this lesson, Lord. Lord, we thank you for um, any ways that we might have been convicted um, by your Holy Spirit in this lesson. We pray, Lord, that you would just continue to mold us and shape us into what you would want us to be, God. We pray that you would continue to breathe new life into us, God, and that you would remove all those things in us that should not be. I pray, Lord, that our families would become stronger, Lord, so that we may honor you in a greater way. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would dwell in our homes, Lord, and that you would fill our homes with your love, your joy, your peace, your wisdom, God. Lord, I pray for um, all the kids and their parents, Lord, give them Um, the patience that's needed to continue to go through this pandemic, God. Give wisdom to the parents as they continue to navigate life in a pandemic, God. Lord, we pray that you would continue to protect us and keep us all safe, God. Let your light shine in and through us. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. We lift your name on high. We pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I want you all to have a wonderful, 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 wonderful week. I hope to see you on Wednesday for Bible study and Saturday live for crafts and snacks. All right, you have a great one. Wear those masks and stay safe. I love you. Bye.